Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your earth science teacher, Mr. Stano. And today we're going to go into radioactive dating or a way of finding the absolute age of something. When something is radioactive, it means that the atoms or the, the, the atoms themselves are going to basically break down or they're going to decay over time because they were unstable. There's an imbalance between the protons and neutrons that make up that atom. So you can see here on this little diagram, we have a radioactive atom. A particle is coming off right here, and we also give off energy. When these atoms break down, they usually break down to something a little bit more stable, and then that's what remains. We use um, this radioactive uh, nature of atoms because we know that how long it takes for something to break down. So certain radioactive isotopes break down in certain times. These isotopes such as carbon-14, potassium-40, uranium, the rubidium-87, we know how fast they break down from their unstable to stable state. So from that, we're able to get the term of rock or once living organisms by using what's known as the half-life of those isotopes. So here on page one of our science reference table, you can see the different radioactive isotopes here, the ones that we're gonna be looking at, what they break down into, so carbon-14 breaks down into nitrogen-14, and how long it takes for that atom to break down or that material to break down. So once again, times 10 to the third means 1,000, times 10 to the ninth, looking at billions, billions here, and then a little bit more than that. So what is half-life? Basically, you're going to start off with 100% of something. So if we're... For instance, we're uh, dating some sort of fossil or a bone. We're going to be starting with 100% of the isotope. After one half-life, half of the original isotope decays right here. So then you have 100, and it breaks down into 50% of the isotope, and then 50 like this. After another half-life, it breaks down into 25, breaks down by half again. And then from there, this will break down by half again. So you can see the progression of what breaks down from unstable into stable. The half-life is not affected by pretty much anything that is going on. It's not affected by any temperature, physical, or chemical states of anything. Um, anything in the environment, any sort of plate tectonics, it doesn't affect our radioactive decay. Um, it happens at a very predictable rate. We're going to go over this a lot more in class, so this is just kind of like a breakthrough into it. Here's the rate of half-life. This chart is a good chart. I would have this down. What it shows is that the age in half-life, so we start at present time after one half-life, two, and you can see we lose 50% each time, 100 to 50, 50, moving down into 25, and then into 12.5, and eventually getting near zero. So this is the age and half-life in bottom. This diagram just shows the uh, carbon-14 breaking down. So you have one kilogram after one half-life. It has 0.5 kilograms, and then that'll break down to 0.25. It's not like the material disappears. Remember, carbon-14 is going to break down into nitrogen-14. So here we have... 0.5 kilograms of carbon-14, well, that means there's 0.5 of nitrogen-14 somewhere. And then here, we're going to have nitrogen-14. So it'll come off of this and off of that. And same with there. So carbon-14 breaks down. Ultimately, you'll end up with the same amount. At the end, you'll have that one kilogram. It just will be nitrogen-14 towards the end. So it's a progression from here to there. Well, like I said, it's a, it's a little tough, but we'll get through this in class some more. Carbon dating. Basically, like we said, we can use these radioactive isotopes to figure out the to uh, time when things once were either living or formed. So here's an example of a problem. We'll go over this in class. If you'd like to copy it down, more than welcome to. We'll go over it again. So... Carbon-14 alone, though, is only used for basically things that are uh, basically about anywhere from 15,000 to 40,000 years old. 
Well, we know Earth is 4.6 billion years old. There's a big difference. So we can't use carbon-14 for once living things. We have to use other isotopes because they have a half-life that will make it easier to figure out the age of older rocks or things that happened in the past. This is just looking at some uh, artifacts that have been dated. So we have a mummy right here. This man died uh, 1,200 years ago, buried with his boots on. They used carbon-14 dating to figure this out. Okay, This is the beauty of Luan, who died uh, 4,000 years ago, or once lived 4,000 years ago. Okay, There's more well-preserved bodies. Wupu woman, 3,200 years old, and once again, carbon-14 dating. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this screencast. Take care.